Hey guys, and how's it going? Today I am giving you my first impressions of Claustrophobia 1643 by Monolith. Let's get right to it. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm gonna start with pros, and then we're gonna end in cons, and then my final thoughts. So for pros, one of the big things that I like is the downtime and the lack thereof. There's not a lot of downtime, and a lot of that comes from the streamlining of all of the actions that you can do. Really, for like the heroes, they're just doing two actions each. There's you know probably about four of them, but you're just doing two. You just move and attack, or attack and the move, and that's pretty much all you do. Um, you can do some a little bit of card manipulation there uh, a little bit beforehand, but um, and you roll dice and you allocate them, and then as the um, the enemy, the demon player. You roll three dice, and then you determine where those go, and then you do those actions, and then you're done. It's really, really smooth and streamlined, and I love it. I, I'm i a huge... I do not like downtime at all in games, um, because people end up just wandering around, or you're bored, or like, if I'm there, it, it's kind of like watching a live football game, I don't know if you ever have or not, but you don't want to spend three hours watching 30 minutes of football. Likewise, I don't want to spend an hour playing a board game when really all I get out of it is a good 40 minutes. Okay, that's 20 minutes wasted there, and that's not including setup time and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of something I really, really like about this game is just how quick and fast-paced it is. Now, not only do we have that really quick gameplay, but it all seems pretty balanced. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, um, you know, I mean, not just because I haven't played a lot, but because it seems swingy, but it, at the end of the day, it's the same swinginess. And what I mean by that is... If I'm going after a player and I'm, and I have like my demon and a bloodhound or a hellhound and maybe like three troglodytes, I can take that hero out. I can be like, I, you know what? That guy's dead. Just like that. Um, however, um, just as easily, they can just kill all my troglodytes and almost murder my demon in one hit with like two guys. I mean, it just, the, the power levels always seem extravagant and seem extreme, but in the end, it seems pretty balanced, at least so far. Again, I've only, pl only played one game here, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. It, it reminds me a lot of, um, uh, honestly, a lot of Eric Lane games do this, where you, you, you see a card or you see an ability and you're like, that's overpowered. Well, that's overpowered. You're overpowered. It, it is, everybody's overpowered and it just equals out, right? Um, in Conan, you do that with like Conan all the time. It's like Conan can just like straight up just murder everybody. But at the end of the day, it's all balanced and streamlined and the, the, the wind conditions seem accurate. And, uh, I really like that. Additionally, one other thing that I really like is just how different the game plays from a normal dungeon crawl. And what I mean by that is the the things you're doing in there seem really, really cool. Like in the first mission, you might have already seen this um, in Monolith's video, but uh, you're, you're kind of... <laughs> I actually compared it to Jurassic Park uh, 2 when they're all like running from the raptors in the tall grass and they're just like plucking down, <laughs> right? As the heroes, you're just trying to get to the exit and so you're just trying to chase this like faint like, air, like clear, fresh air that you you detect. And so you're like following this path, and you're just trying to survive and get to the exit and leave. That's your objective. Meanwhile, the demons are like killing your guys as they fall behind. Kind of like that scene. It's actually really fun, very thematic, and just different and cool, right? I've never done that in Descent. I've never done that in Rise of Moloch. I've never done that in the, the idea of chasing the air and all that. It just the theme matches actual gameplay mechanics which just gives the whole experience of something that's quite unique, and I really like that. Moving back on to uh, game flow here, I think one of the strengths is actually that's two players. Now, I know that doesn't work for a lot of gaming groups. Actually, it doesn't work for much of a group at all, right? There's just two people involved at any given time. And obviously, you're probably going to want to play all, all scenarios, and so it's really just a two-player game. Now, you could add other people in the heroes. That's technically possible, but I wouldn't suggest it, because the moment you add more people... That game flow that's so sweet and so streamlined and so awesome is going to go. Okay, because people are going to just, be, you're going to be discussing a plan, which is fine, instead of thinking of a plan and acting the plan, and then you either win or lose based off of how good your plan was, or how well you implemented it, or whether or not the other person just had a better plan. And that, not only is it more personal, more gratifying, whether you win or lose, you, you know it's because of actions that happened that were in your control, as opposed to, oh, you know, Bob and Steve over there just, couldn't agree, so we ended up doing what I did, but or just whatever. Just those group mechanics, while fun, would just 
slog the game down more than I would like. I love streamlined games. Like I said, I want filet mignon. I don't want an all-you-can-eat buffet. So get rid of all the excess that isn't perfect and great and awesome. Leave me this two-player golden nugget of a, of a steak. <laughs> Okay, well, we got to talk about miniatures, right? Miniature quality is awesome. It's great. It's really, really good. I'm pretty happy with it. Well, I'm, I'm not pretty. I am happy with it. I can't wait to paint these. I already have a vote on my Patreon of what I'm going to paint first. I might do another vote on maybe the first hero I paint, perhaps. I don't know. Well, we'll see. First, I'm going to paint uh, the first one that they voted, and then I'll, I'll see if I do the hero vote uh, perhaps next month or this month. February. Now earlier I mentioned scenarios and I believe if I counted right and remember right there were like 21 scenarios. There's a lot. It's there's a lot of game content here. 21 scenarios each one taking about an hour by, by the seams of it. Maybe some are more longer. Maybe some are a little bit shorter. Depends on if somebody wins early. But on average it's probably about 21 hours of game content only if you play through once and these all could be repeatable. Not only can they do standalone, it's not like you're like, you know, keeping things from one to another. So while they, they might, um, and I haven't looked ahead, but they might tell a story, but that doesn't mean you can't one off them. And with only two players, it's like, hey, if, if, if a game night fails and everybody didn't show up but one guy, claustrophobia. There you go. You're welcome. You'll have a great time. Now with that, there's a good price versus content ratio with this, right? I mean, this game was not $120, which is kind of the new norm. Um, the, the ratio is kind of hard just because you can always look in the past and see what the past offered, but the past is the past, right? It was a different time. It was a different time on Kickstarter, different time for board games. There weren't a whole lot of tariffs or they were different. And it just, so there's like socioeconomic issues and just inflation and whatever. Either way, it's very hard to do it. So you really only can compare to what's available alongside it. Right. You just kind of have to, because otherwise you're going to get bogged down, right? Mythic Battles Pantheon was like, 90 bucks for all stretch goals and the core game and stuff like that. Like, it, that's insane, right? If, if that happened now, that'd be crazy. But the reprint didn't cost that. It costs more, right? Because times change. So, um, it's a great price for a content ratio. Again, like, it, it's, it's, it was, it was a no-brainer. And if it pops up again, it's along the same price, it's probably still going to be a no-brainer. Now, the components are top tier. They really are good. Not only do you get the uh, 3D tokens and you get, you know, uh, a thick cardboard and double thick cardboard where the 3D tokens fit into it and, uh, and, they're, and they're foldy and their perforation is like fantastic. So they punch out well. And you got quality miniatures, a whole lot of those. You got a big game tray. So the storage awesome is great. Just all around, all this stuff makes it feel like a collector's item. A little bit more on that later, but I believe that a Kickstarter item should feel special. Even if you're just repackaging what the retail will be, put a leaflet in there. A little thank you. It costs you almost nothing to do. It takes up no box space. But either way, something about it should be unique. And I'm not just talking a unique miniature or something like that. It should just feel special, right? Especially these limited runs like what Claustrophobia was. It, it You can tell that it's not a retail box, right? From, from the little de wound tokens that are these 3D skulls, right? You don't do that in a retail box. It weighs too much. It takes up too much space. It does all that. Um, but anyway, it, it just, it just, it's great. The, uh, the finish on the cardboard is awesome. And, um, again, I love the double thick part of it. It actually has a game tray that can hold all the stuff once you punch it out. Now, they didn't give me a bag. It's okay. I can buy Ziploc bags. I just stuffed them in there. And it does close completely flat and, and level. You take out the tray and there's enough room in there to do that, which is, I, I I'm really happy with. I don't think it will fit sleeved cards, though. It was not that I saw. Now, speaking of collector's items and just it's feeling special and unique for Kickstarter, the box art is full art. There is no monolith symbol here. It's down here, right? there. It's just this amazing art that they have. And it looks great. I actually have it displayed just like this. I didn't put it in a shelf. I actually have it, like, on top of the shelf. Um, for, you know, all my gaming board stuff. Because it just looks great. The back of the box, same thing. They're not trying to sell you what the game is because it's you're not picking it up off a game shelf. You already know what it is. You bought it from Kickstarter. And therefore, it's this great, great art and box. And I love that. I love that they're doing that. Um, so kudos to that. That's great. And the art goes throughout. 
one of the best things I like about this game is that its use of black and white. It's very minimalist, but it has like this like inlaid design to it, like this kind of grayed hash to it. It just looks clean and trim and and dare I say modern. Like it, it's really really nice. I love the black and white. But then you get like the tiles, and, and I actually have a few here to show you. And the 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 art is dark, but then you get these splashes of color. So I'm going to show a few of these out here. But um, these are great. I, I hopefully I'm zooming in on this uh, in the edit. Um, but just they look fantastic. You would not expect this in hell, but here we are. And and most of it's not this. And then you get these splashes of color, these vibrant kind of um, super exposure. You know, like just great colors, right? And uh, I really, really like that. And then the just the theme of hell to begin with, that's been done forever. But claustrophobia isn't like that. Like, this doesn't necessarily look like your normal stuff. Right? Not only do they just have troglodytes or a bug-eyed, but... <sighs> the Westerners are just unique. The demons are unique. You know, they got you got, like, the hunter with, like, the, the fin face. And you got, like, the people with, like, just blades strapped to their axes and just... All around, it's a very unique theme that I really appreciate, and it goes from top to bottom. Every piece of this, from the box outside to the cards inside, exude this theme, and that's that's a definite pro for me. One last positive thing that I want to say is just that there is an index in the rulebook. I'll probably call this out every time, because for some reason, some game developers think that they should make a technical document that is the rulebook full of very technical things and definitions and rules to follow and procedures and processes and all this stuff that you need to know and spread it out everywhere because it, whether it's organized or not stuff is going to touch on other pieces right um combat might you know you have combat you have movement and maybe an escape attack is that under movement is it under combat is it mentioned in both i don't know keep an index you should never write a rule book without an index i don't care if it's three pages that's an easy index to write then write it anyway okay just have an index with your rule book. If your game is sufficiently complex to where I have to kind of leaf through things, tell me where everything's mentioned. And in fact, their, their rule book's great because it bolds like the main one. And so you kind of have like, okay, that's where they're really talking about it. And then where it's mentioned, which is great. So props on that. All right, well, that's it for all the pros that I can really think of right now. So let's move on to the cons. One of the issues I actually had, and we restarted our first game because of this, is the tiles can sometimes be hard to read because they're not using like the grid box outlines like where they're marking edges in red line to outline them and stuff like that or green or you know how board games will do that or they're not marking spots you can move in white instead it's just the art and that can leave something to be desired the art looks beautiful just using it so ideally you have a tile like this where you can tell that you can go this way and you can go this way but you can't go that way right you can you, you clearly see that but even just this one that I took here, right, this example here, so you have this. Now, originally, and this is actually one of the better ones because these are pretty thick, but this can get about half as thin, right? And this can even turn almost into it, and it looks like it might turn, okay? Or, or maybe you're going under it. Maybe this is just over it, but this is actually a dead end, okay? So once you get that, it makes sense, but some of the art is even worse than this, and it's just really hard to to tell at times to the point where I realized afterwards like oh that was actually a dead end we ended up having uh, several dead ends um and the, and the rules uh, you know state that like hey if, if you run out of places toss a dead end and get one that actually gets you a place to go right and so that's good um speaking of the rules in the scenario book um there's a bit of an issue just where uh it it, it I think it tries to visually show things a lot and the simplified and it's great but like even the first mission you're supposed to take tile pile A it doesn't say what tile pile A is it turns out it's all of them remove two of the tiles and exit in an entrance one right and then reshuffle them to make tile B uh, tile pile B which is just A shuffled okay so but in the game box you have these two piles so I thought maybe one was A and one was B so I was looking on the tile just trying to see like is there an A somewhere in a corner? Can I tell which ones are A, which ones are B? No, it's just how they decided to word it. It's fine. It could just be me, but I kind of went down a path that made me kind of confused to the point where I went on YouTube and watched their playthrough of it and saw they had a big giant stack. I'm like, okay, they must just mean everything. Um, even though that's just me assuming. It, it doesn't like clearly state it, which is kind of a bummer. Okay, now this one's a minor nitpick, but the minis aren't to scale to the tile. And so you have like your minis and you have your your tile here and they're obviously too big for the art now you rarely rarely get 
actual scale um, because that'd be silly, right? I mean, if if either all the buildings are really tiny or you have a huge map and that'd be too much room. I get that. And I'm not sure what made me really notice it. I think it's just because it's a big difference, um, which, by the way, I'm happy with the size of the minis, so I'm not saying shrink those. I'm not saying make the towels bigger either. It already takes up a lot of room. Uh, just, I, I don't know. I don't, again, minor nitpick. It's always nice if it seems to match closer. Um, and I, it seems like they might have tried to cram a bit too much on these tiles, perhaps, via the art. I'm not sure. So, anyway, just a little note there. Okay, now, before I mentioned that I thought the uh, miniatures were great, and they are, and I can't wait to paint them, but they're not actually as good as Monolith has done in the past. See, I think Mythic Battles Pantheon actually is better, and if you look at my unboxing, if you haven't seen it, by the way, link in the description below, check it out, I do... I call it an OCD unboxing. I'm very thorough in my unboxings, and I really kind of detail and almost review the miniatures and the various components and how they feel and how thick they are and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I do kind of a round table, and I have some Mythic Battles Pantheon miniatures right next to it. And you notice they're even a different color. I don't know if Mythic Battles is... I don't. It's not all ABS. I think it's still PVC with an... Maybe it's a harder PVC? I don't know. One of the most noticeable ways to tell is the chains. So uh, the interlocking chains are really hard to do with miniatures. They tend to just muddle and flatten um, or or not really have holes, right? So it looks more like just kind of smooth bump. But um, either way, I think they're a little bit better in Mythic Battles Pantheon. And at least upon first release, it's hard with the release. They were about the same price, um, but then you got all the stretch goals. So uh, that's not a fair comparison. But at the end result, the end result, regardless of price or anything, is these miniatures, Mythic Battles Pantheon, I would vote a little bit higher than Claustrophobia. Both of them would be in the very acceptable, I'm happy as the King of Average category. So no harm, no foul there, just something to note, I guess. Now I mentioned this in my unboxing as well, but the red and white dice, the little tiny dice that the, um, I, I can't remember the specific name, but that the uh, demon rolls, the three that he rolls, the red portion of that die is hard to read for me. I am slightly colorblind. Um, I don't typically have problems with reds, but it's just if the red was brighter, it's a little, a little bit more of a darker red as opposed to like a you know, like a candy red or something like that. And so if it was a little bit of a brighter red, I think I'd be able to see it better. But because of how small it is and then black and then a little bit darker red, it's just a little fuzzy. I can read it. It's not a big thing, but I would have appreciated a little bit of a brighter red. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but that, there's some nitpicking there because I'm very happy with that this game. And this brings me to my final verdict. Now, I can say right now that this gets the King's Seal of Approval. I fully support this game. It's great. I'm happy I backed it. Um, if it comes to Kickstarter again or you have a means of getting it and you know you have another person that would be willing to play it with you, get it. It's a great game. All around the component quality. I, I am completely satisfied with this purchase. Um, I'll be playing it more, trust me. I, I had to stop playing this game to film this video, so I hope you're happy. <laughs> and, and really, that's, that's it. Buy it if you can. If you didn't, I'm sorry. Um, if you don't have another person to play it with, because it only, there's only two players, that's kind of a bummer. You should live closer, I'd play it with you. Um, anyway, great game. That's Claustrophobia 1643 by Monolith. I have a Forbidden Fortress unboxing coming up. Uh, and hate's coming as well, so we've been looking for that for a while. So, uh, and of course, the miniature painting. So, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you didn't. If you so, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. If you didn't, either leave or leave a nasty comment below. I guess. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Hey.